So, I'm Pamela Zweilberg and um, I'm an, an artist and I've been an educator for many, many years and um, came to Artist Books via a need to um, document and narrate with and without words. And I had a graduate school teacher who said, um, have you, I was, I was drawing everything I could find. Everything that came through my life um, got drawn or photographed and drawn or painted or rebuilt in some way or another got recorded. And so I had this, this detritus all around me, small drawings and notations all everywhere, large drawings everywhere. And she said, have you ever thought of the book form? And of course I had thought of the book form because my mother was a librarian, a children's librarian, and I had read books all my life and loved them. And um, she said, you know, there's this, this interesting movement among mostly women in America and elsewhere called uh, artist books. And uh, artist books were, were uh, described to me as being a piece of art in which the artist was responsible for everything, for the structure, for the uh, support, for the words, for the images, for the sequencing, for everything. And it, it sounded like a wonderful place to start if you were interested in narrating with things. If you were interested in telling stories about um, people's lives as interpreted by things. So I made a series of books that were meant to be the books of a certain person. She had a postcard album and she had a, um, a diary and she had a, a notational book, a memo book, and she had a sketchbook because she was a drawer, and she had um, a couple other things like that, um, a, a little black book, a cookbook, and by lifting in details as well as careful drawings and, and things that I was doing anyway, you know, um, trying to think about how art worked as a, a, a part of narrative life, um, it just seemed to be a natural uh, collection, co collecting uh, mechanism. So those were the books of a person, a fictional person who was a lot like me, and her fictional community, which was a lot like my fictional community. And then, of course, I discovered what people had been doing with with artist books. And um, there was the sky was the limit. There were people working in um, um, sort of catalogs about their work. Now that was kind of a traditional way to use a book, but there were also people who would do artworks in order that they be uh, documented by pages of pictures and and texts. So there was a kind of a turning. There was a, a, a you know there was a happening, but the happening was off stage, and the art piece was the artist book that came from it. And there were lots of people who were interested in circumventing the gallery system. We were getting tired of having to. Um, beg our way into galleries where only one out of 35 people could be shown, even if they had wonderful work to look at. Um, and so you could make a book and send it to everybody you knew, because books could be multiples or they could be singles. It, one artifact that you crafted in a, 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 a careful way could be distributed to a hundred of your friends and your collectors and strangers who liked that sort of thing. So you had in some t sometimes you had as in mail art um, the gallery was your mailbox or the gallery was your bookshelf or the gallery was your little collection of wonderful stuff that you could pick up and activate as we have loved to activate books all our lives so um, I, I began to think in terms of sequences because one of the wonderful parts of having a book is that the um, person who's involved with it is activating it through time and instead of relying upon a single artifact to tell a whole circumstance, story, um, condition of mind and heart, you have the opportunity to move from one to the next which are connected in one way or another. And if you're an artist who's used to designing things, you're thinking about what is alike as you go through something and what is different. So if the format is alike, and that which is um, th that which is sharing a format is different, you already have a nice kind of uh, um, again a, a collecting um, artifact, a, a way of of entertaining and um, and 
packaging more than just a single hit. So you could talk about um, a fiction or a fact, a document. You could have an idea like an alphabet and, and rather than having just the A page, you had given yourself permission to have A all the way through Z because each of the pages could be a, a, a single piece of art, but it didn't have to stand alone. It was then tied in its intention to the entire sequence. And um, one of the early books that I made was called The Alphabet Book, and, and it was a stream of consciousness between the two languages that I was working in. I just, I, I, I just sort of, you know, flowed into all the words that started with the, with the letter A, and then chose one of them and made a drawing. So they're odd because they're neither for children nor they are they for adults. They're just kind of a mishmash of German and English. I was working in Germany at the time. Um, but they have the framework of the alphabet. So Abecedarium is, of course, a, a, a long-standing uh, artist's book kind of idea, um, sometimes an, an illustrated children's book. But, but the difference is that we, the, the artist's book is not a text which is illustrated. It's a piece of work conceived as everything working together, structure, echoing or supporting form, form supporting content so that it marries itself. And that was, as you can imagine, a wonderful thing to try to teach. You know, you didn't just teach kids or young adults or adults how to make book structures, you taught them to think in terms of supporting an idea.